What you get is what you get, you know what I mean? Like to get them in the studio for a couple hours is, a, is a, an accomplishment unto itself. So once you get them in, you just have them sing it as many times as they are willing. And then at the end, you take everything back and you kind of edit and you're like, okay, well this line was really good and that, that word, he was coughing in that word, so let's find a word from a different take. And you just kind of build the best track you can from what, from what you have. And then, uh, and then, yeah, that's, that's pretty oh, much the process. Terrifying. But more importantly than the technical stuff, it was really, really fun. It was really fun. Uh, I've, go, I've gone to visit those guys on set quite a few times, so it's always fun for me to see the way that they work and the environment that the show's created in and kind of see what their day-to-day -day stuff is like. So it was fun to have them in my world, uh, which is infinitely less interesting. Than being on a TV show. I mean, the, the studio part, at least. You're singing into a microphone, and there's not even a crowd there, so. Um, but it was really, really fun. Those guys, I'm sure, as you know, or you wouldn't be here, they're really fun to hang out with. So, when I get the chance to, I, I do it. Awesome, well, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Jason. Thanks so much for being here. My pleasure. I have a question for you about the Tough Mudder, and what was that whole experience really like? Uh, it was the best, worst, funnest, most painful, uh, scariest thing that I can't wait to do again. Yeah, it was really fun. There was a... Uh, <clears throat> I don't really even remember how that started. I mean, it was an email uh, text chain where there's a bunch of us on it, and it just kind of went out, and we were like, yeah, and everybody checked their schedule. Some guys couldn't do it, some guys could. And uh, we had every intention of, um, I, I, those guys are always in shape. I had every intention of like training, like putting my, my Rocky music on and, and doing my own uh, Stallone montage and being ripped at the end of it and like walking out and everybody being like, dude, what happened? It didn't happen. 
I went in to, uh, I went in like two weeks before, like I kept putting it off, kept putting it off. And I was like, okay, the best way to get in shape these days is obviously CrossFit. Of course, everybody's doing CrossFit, they look amazing. I'll go to the CrossFit gym and whip myself into shape in two weeks. <laughs> and I went in and they were doing some crazy hundred pull-ups, hundred push-ups, hundred sit-ups, hundred every other exercise they could think of. And I just jumped in. I was like, hey, no pain, no gain, right? I'm in. And I limped out of there, both uh, physically and mentally defeated. I didn't finish it. And the next day, I couldn't move my arms. And the day after that, I could, I could move them even less. And so by the third day, every single solitary part of my body hurt. And I sat down at the computer and I was like sending some emails. And then I stood up from the computer and I walked away. <laughs> ne neither hand worked, neither arm worked, so I couldn't push them down. Like if this arm didn't work, so I couldn't. And I literally, I had to just wait <laughs> for them to slowly fall. And I texted uh, Jensen, I was like, dude, this is embarrassing, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it. He was like, dude, you're fine, you got it, no big deal, we're, it's a team, we're all, whatever. I was like, no, I don't physically think I can do it. I don't think I can get on the plane. Like, I think I'm gonna go, have to go to the hospital. I think I hurt myself real bad. I was like Googling like what uh, the worst possible overuse scaring the heck out of myself, thinking like, oh, I totally had that. I've got rhabdomyosis or whatever it is. I'm, I'm gonna die, I should go to the hospital. Oh my God, same thing. So, but the butter was awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, obviously, I eventually got less sore to the point where I could move and I could function. Uh, and, uh, and so we did it. Thankfully, there was a ton of people in the course and it went really slow, so I didn't even slow them down all that much. Hi. Hi. So. How are, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Good. So I totally love and appreciate your stage it shows. Thank you. They have like helped me study a lot because I'll be watching them while studying. What makes you like want to spend your time doing that for us? Uh, stage it. If you guys don't know what stage it is, it's an online venue. So it's basically like a musician can log on to stage it and and put on a show. And um, tons of artists do it. I, I try to do about one a month. And uh, it's really fun because it's basically what I would be doing anyway. It's basically a rehearsal. So I, I log in from my studio at my house and I just do kind of what I'm doing now. Um, less talking, more singing, but a lot of talking too. And, uh, and it's basically just a way to, to turn the notch up a little bit on your rehearsal. Because you know people are watching and there's interaction and you're, you know, it's, it's an actual like performance rehearsal to me as opposed to like singing by yourself in your room or playing guitar in your room where if your phone rings, you're gonna answer your phone. Or if, you know, you, you're thirsty, you're gonna stop playing and get up and go. But if you're, if you're on the clock and you've got an hour to play, you have to get ready, you have to prepare, you have to be on beginning to end. Um, plus it's just a fun way to connect with fans that are kind of spread out all over the place. Fans that don't normally get to be in the same show, you know, because people from Germany or England or Pittsburgh can tune in. So, um, yeah, it's really fun. It's been, I don't know, four years, three years, four years, something like that. I've been doing them. Pretty crazy. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. I'll take one more and then I'll uh, sing a song. Hi, Jason. Hi. Um, I actually, my aunt and I met you at DC Con a couple months back. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Um, and you were talking about how uh, there was a specific song that um, you were terrified to sing at uh, one point in your life, but then you got up and did it anyways. Um, I was just wondering if there was actually ever a con experience that you were afraid to sing at because like there were too many people or there was something wrong with the tech or something like that. Uh, do you remember what the song was? I cannot remember, <laughs> sorry. That's good, because I don't either, so I'm going to make one up and I just wanted to make sure that you weren't going to call me on it. Um, it was a Ave Maria. That's my aunt. How did you know? 
<laughs> did, did, uh, it was a specific song that I was afraid to sing that you're saying, and then I sang it anyway. Yeah. Uh, actually, the, the song that that was, was uh, a song called Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, by uh, Jeff, well, it's by Leonard Cohen. The version that I do is kind of inspired by Jeff Buckley. Yep. And uh, it's a really emotional song, and everyone kind of has their own take and their own feel about it. And... Uh, and I just, I all, and I, people would ask me to sing it all the time, and I would always kind of say no, and I push it off because it's just so many people sing it, you know what I mean? And uh, and then I kind of got to the place. I don't really know what it was. It was a um, it was a specific thing that I had to learn it for. Like it was a, I don't know, a wedding or a something. Someone asked me to specifically sing it, so I learned it and I sang it. And I just really loved the song. And I kind of came to realize that a really beautiful song is kind of like uh, Shakespeare, in the sense that once a really good actor does a Shakespeare play, it's not done, it's not finished, lock it up, that guy did it and he nailed it, so nobody else can do Shakespeare. It's, you know, people want to see their actor, their favorite actor, or their an actor that they appreciate and enjoy, do things that they've seen other people do to kind of contrast and compare and really see how that person makes it their own. So that was kind of the conclusion I came to with Hallelujah. Like it's, it's like a good Shakespeare play where you can look it up and there's a hundred artists that have sang it, and then um, you can just you can hear somebody that you know sing it and kind of see what they do with it, and where their voice fits in with it. That's also why I do a lot of uh, a lot of cover songs. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll play a little bit of it.
It's even better, obviously, with Rob Benedict when the two of us can kind of play off of each other and stuff. So um, we've done that a bunch of times together, which is really fun. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Really good. Good. First, I'd like to thank you for playing us that little mini excerpt because it's one of my favorite.